questions for oral answer. Question number one in the name of the Honourable David Cunliffe. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Prime Minister, does he still stand by his statement, quote, there's no fundamental underlying reasons to believe there's a problem in our housing market? And if so, has his government done enough to assist people into their own homes? Mr. Speaker, Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, yes, I don't believe there is a crisis in housing, particularly when you compare the current situation with that in the mid-2000s when house prices doubled and mortgage rates rose to as high as 10.9 per cent. In answer to the second part of the question, Mr Speaker, uh, this government is implementing a wide range of policies that will help people who want to buy their own home. Mr Speaker. Supplementary question, Honourable David Cunliffe. Does the Prime Minister maintain there's no housing crisis in Canterbury when an entire ward of mental health patients who don't need to be there are living in a hospital costing the DHB $13,000 a night due to a lack of affordable accommodation. Right, Honourable Speaker, Prime Minister. Speaker, I don't have the details that the member's talking about, but in relation to Christchurch, um, this is significant now housing underway, taken in the context of the fact that we've had major Christchurch earthquake there. Mr. Speaker, again about supplementary question, the Honourable David Cunliffe. What is he doing to speed up the rebuild of Christchurch when Deloitte's estimate that less than 1,000 of the 12 to 15,000 houses that Canterbury needs have actually yet been built? Speaker, right, Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, I thank the member for asking that question uh, because it gives me an opportunity to outline actually what we are doing, which is the housing accord with Christchurch. Well, not enough is when house prices double and interest rates go to 11 per cent. That's a shocker. But anyway, Mr Speaker, we are progressing a housing accord with Christchurch to accelerate development on central and local government. As the member would have seen in the budget, we're suspending duties and tariffs on imported building materials. We're reforming uh, legislation in this area, Mr Speaker. We've extended the KiwiSaver first home deposit. But Mr Speaker, one of the things we are doing is addressing the issue of land. Interestingly enough, I did see a report that said increasing the supply of, of housing through identifying new land for residential development and lowering the cost of construction, which are both inputs into the cost of housing, are most likely the most likely ways to achieve a reduction in house prices in the long run. That was, of course, the Labor House Price Unit established in 2007 in DPMC. The then government, led by Helen Clark, did absolutely zippo, and that's why house prices doubled under Labor. Order, order. Supplementary question, Honourable David Cunliffe. At least we're not trumpeting a housing accord with order, bare with land the member, and state houses, Mr the member Speaker. please ask his supplementary question? Lines on maps, Mr Speaker. Um, to the Prime Minister, does he agree with the NZIR economist Shamabel Ikwab that having the most expensive housing in the OECD relative to rents is driven by speculation? And if so, why isn't he tackling speculators with a capital gains tax? Right, Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, for a start off, speculators already pay a capital gains tax. Um, secondly, if the member actually wants to quote NZIER, well, their quarterly forecast yesterday predicted that house sales are likely to drop and house prices are likely to level off in the next six months. They expect house price inflation to be 1% nationwide and 5% in Auckland. And that, Mr Speaker, would be consistent with the fact that under this government, house prices have gone up 28% and mortgage rates are at, at uh, lows that we haven't really seen for a very long period of time. And house prices double under Labor. And when the member said, oh, well, that just says it all, the housing accords the way to resolve the issue, actually the answer is yes, Mr Speaker releasing land, actually reforming the armour of May, dealing with development contributions and looking at the other um, bottlenecks in housing are exactly what the Productivity Commission and everybody has said about housing. This government's doing it. That, that, that opposition Order. when they were Order. in government did nothing. Order. Mr Speaker, he's not going to split the bill, Mr Speaker. Question. Split the bill. Mr Speaker, when NZIR economist Shamabil Ikwab talked about the quote itsy bitsy housing policies, was he referring to the government's trimming a few cents of duties from paint and varnish or selling off 13,500 state houses, including selling down broken pea houses to first home buyers in the provinces? Order, well, Order. Mr. Speaker, right, Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, 
um, the, the member's free to, to throw around criticism. Um, unfortunately, the record of the previous government was so atrocious that it actually left this government the work uh, to do the work. Mr Speaker, first thing we have done when it comes to Auckland is the housing, Auckland Housing Accord, which will produce, well actually it might be nine very soon if you keep going the way you are, son. But anyway, um, so Mr Speaker, that included 39,000 consents over the next three years. Mr Speaker, the housing accord that we've done with Christchurch, Mr Speaker, unlike um, the, what the member actually said, it's not varnish actually off wood, it's three and a half thousand dollars off the construction of a new home. And Mr Speaker, it's reform of wide ranging legislation, including the RMA. Mr Speaker. Supplementary question, the Honourable David Cunliffe. Mr Speaker, does the Prime Minister take the same view as his Minister of Housing, that he doesn't care that people in the regions may actually lose the whole value of their home as a result of imposing loan-to-value ratios? Right, Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, um, the member is quite wrong in the assertion he makes, but, but Mr Speaker, the member is often wrong. I noticed that a couple of days ago he was on TV with his dog whistle politics telling the world he didn't want migration. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Order. Order. Point of order, Honourable David. Cameron. It's always nice, Mr Speaker, to hear the Prime Minister attempt to address a question, but preferably the one that's actually been asked. Sir. Order, order. And the Prime Minister did, because the question was, does he agree with the statement allegedly made by the Housing Minister? And he said he, he refuted the statement, said he did not agree. It's the second part, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, to Supplementary the Prime question, Honourable David Cunliffe. Mr Speaker, doesn't the Prime Minister realise that when the median house prices increased over 40 per cent in Auckland since he took office and wages have been stagnant, that it is harder to get into a home in Auckland after six long years of his tired national government? Order, order. Mr. Right, Speaker, Prime Minister. Um, the member may feel tired, but I don't. Um, so, Mr Speaker... The second point is that under this government, house prices have risen 28%. It might be a little higher than everyone wants, but it's not 96%. You see, if you had nine, to quote them, long years and you did something about it, maybe in opposition you'd actually be free to get up and make a few comments or criticise. But given that government, when they were there, did absolutely nothing, no wonder the public think they're a joke when they talk about this issue. But I know I'm happy to keep going, well, actually, if no, you like. But, I, but I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> Question number two. Honourable To Hanare. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Order, order. I've called the Honourable To Hanare. Thank you. 